All right, let me introduce the next chef, Shinobu Namae. Uh, his innovative French cuisine at restaurant Le Favessons in Tokyo focuses on humble ingredients like vegetables, paying respect to them in dishes such as turnip cooked for four hours, served with parsley sauce and brioche crumbs. And effervescence, this difficult name, means explosion of power. He has also worked for French cult chef Michel Bras at his restaurants both in France and in Hokkaido, Japan, and under Heston Blumenthal at the Fat Duck in England. Please join me in welcoming Chef Namai. Thank you for introducing and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, in this session. And first of all, uh, let me finish my dish because I am not uh, good at speaking. And uh, I'm not, I, I don't feel comfortable like making and speaking. So I'm gonna finish my dish and please uh, raise a hand if you want to taste my dish. Just, just one plate. Right? <laughs> You're the first. Okay. I want to get you. So now so. we have a moment of Japanese silence then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to explain it later, but it's uh, subi cooked turnip and with the with a fine salt. Season it. And sear on the pan. Can I ask you something about the turnips? Because <laughs> normally in Japan, turnips are used for pickles and not really in dishes like this. How do people react on that? Because they don't really realize in the pickles that it's a turnip, it's something just pickled. Right. Can you explain a bit about that? Once again, please. That you, you chose a turnip that usually goes into pickle. Well, as... yes. Um, some part, yes. And, uh, but the other parts, no. Because uh, I would like to express about the turnip. It is called kabu in Japanese. And it is always served as a garnishing. I mean, uh, even in a Fran Fr French cuisine, it's a kind of a garnishing for, for, for example, for the meat or fish plate, or sometimes make it into puree. And even in Japanese cuisine, it become, becomes uh, like, a, like pickles for the uh, steamed rice or something like that. But uh, I like to put this uh, sub-character into the main character. So what I wanted to explain about it is that the uh, appreciation of each product, it's quite Japanese way. And um, well, it take time. I will I will explain later. <laughs> so sear uh, the cutting side of the turnip, and after that, I'm gonna put the butter in it. It's really. Frenchy, Frenchy way of cooking. <laughs> Using the butter for the turnip, and then making the brown brown butter in it. Looks simple, just turnip and salt, 
and a butter. That's it. So would you agree with uh, Christian Puglisi, who yesterday said that uh, putting butter in food like this, it's uh, just as, as French as swearing? Or? Sorry, I'm disturbing him. Uh, Christian Puglisi yesterday said that put, using butter like this in food, it's a bit like uh, just, as friend, just as French as swearing. Would you agree with that? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you very well. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. Finally, we reach an answer. <laughs> yeah. Browning the butter. In a French way, a rosé. So we cover it with the brown butter and put the brown butter flavor on the turnip and also warm up with this butter. It's, it looks boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chef, chef's work. <laughs> Every day is a rotate, rotation and rotation. Actually, this is the dish uh, which I served a uh, whole three years since I opened the restaurant. And everyone, uh, any courses or any, uh, sorry, any tasting courses, we serve this dish. All right. Now I'm finishing. The plating. This is the parsley emulsion. Because the parsley has a hazelnut flavor in it, so it combines that hazelnutty flavor butter together. And also, we put the, some croutons made by brioche. because it has a rich buttery flavor in it. And then the half dried uh, Spanish ham because the pig likes the turnip. You know what I mean? <laughs> so today pig is gonna be the sub character for the turnip like like the history is. I love pig. Finish with the flow the cell. Well, plate it like this. Oh, my hand's shaking. Because it's too hot. Right? and finish with the parsley leaves. All right, this is my turnip dish. Let's get into my presentation. Well, my name is uh, Shinobu Namai. I'm from Tokyo, and I work for as a chef at the French restaurant in, in Tokyo. And I learned French cooking, and uh, I came back to Japan, and I start cooking my uh, cuisine as a based on the French cuisine, but um, put more Japanese ingredient or uh, culture or terroir onto it. So I'd like to express uh, 
what's going on. And this is the, all right? Okay. Uh, this said, itadakimasu. Itadakimasu means that uh, thank you for your life given me, or thank you for sacrificing your life to me. Uh, this is the kind of a, a short ceremony before you have any meal. Um, is there anybody Japanese? Yeah? Uh, you say itadakimasu before meal? Yes? No. Oh, <laughs> my god. <laughs> okay, um, this is the way of uh, uh, appreciating the, the things. So. This is Japanese map. Uh, Japan is a long island from south to north, and uh, it's covered with 66% uh, of the wood, I mean the forest, and the other 33% is the flatland. And this is the Tokyo. Actually, this is just in front of our, our restaurant. Uh, on the left-hand side, there's an old shrine, an uh, old temple, and the other side, there's a skyscraper. This is Tokyo. And this is my uh, uh, restaurant's entrance and dining room. Okay, uh, let's quick have, a, have a quick look. Uh, let's go to the market in Tokyo. Um, this is world famous Tsukiji market in Tokyo. It's uh, biggest, uh, one of the biggest fish market and vegetable market in the world. And this is the outside of market. There are many, many people getting it. And this is uh, inside uh, the fishery market. But I'm not talking about the uh, market itself, but just in front of the, 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 this market, there is a small shrine uh, called Namiyoke Shrine. So this shrine prays uh, the god of a, a, a wave, I mean. In this shrine, there are some unique monuments or tombs. From the left-hand side, there is an egg-shaped tombs. It is a tombs for the eggs. And at the center, it's a tombs for the shrimp. And the uh, right-hand side, right -hand side uh, this is the anglerfish tomb. And also, I have a unique one. This is the tomb for the knives. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> so everyone finishing the, the, uh, finished the knives, they uh, try to praise uh, their lives and also praise the lives connected to knives. I mean, if you cut vegetable or fish or meat, all things, all life is connected to knives. So we praise and we say thank you uh, for the knives. And this is an uh, uh, explanation of the Japanese oldest chronicle called Kojiki. Uh, I said, uh, Yao Yorozu no Kami. Yao Yorozu no uh, means uh, uh, 8 million, uh, sorry, uh, 80,000. 80,000 means the infinite number in Japanese. So we have, or we know this, or we uh, recognize the infinite number of gods not only the one God on the heaven, but the God is anywhere around us. Okay, finishing the, the Japanese things, and let's go to the yard around Tokyo. It's a absolutely, uh, uh, apparently, Fuji Mountain. So Jap Japan is a volcanic island, and uh, we have a lot of black uh, volcanic ash and also, we, uh, we have a lot of love rain. It rains a lot, twice as average, a world average. So it means that the soil is very lean. It's not fertile like United States or Europe. So in this uh, lean soil, uh, the turnip uh, growing very well. Well, beautiful. Actually, this, these are all pictures that I took from the Chiba prefecture. And bringing back that uh, turnip into the kitchen, 
And what we're going to do is that we, we have 12 process to finish. So clean turnip, peel it, put it in the sous vide, and cook it in a water bath, right? 68 uh, degrees Celsius. Why is it uh, 68 uh, degree, uh, degrees Celsius? Is that mean that we are acting on the pectin? Uh, there are lots of pectin inside of the turnip, uh, besides the cell wall or between the cell wall. So once you cook it, the pectin changes its shape. And uh, in certain range, like 50 degrees to 80 degrees, the pectin uh, is going to be hardening. Uh, not like a, a softening, but hardening. Uh, reaction of the pectin, methyl ethylers, it's very difficult to pronounce. Uh, well, so from 50 to 80, uh, the vegetable come farmer, and that they try to keep their lives, uh, protecting the, the bacteria or other things to intrude. Uh, in, intrude. So I, as I so, uh, show you, the sear on the pan and uh, cover with the brown butter. So what I wanted to talk about is that, uh, you know, turnip is always the garnishing but somehow it might be or it must be the main dish for the future cuisine. And uh, also, uh, as I talk about uh, every gods about uh, uh, surrounded, uh, we say itadakimasu just before starting the meal. And we appreciate not only one god, but every nature or everything, or even the knives and forks or chopsticks, or anything like table, or chairs, or the air, or the sound. We, have, uh, we can feel uh, the spirits in everything. So this way of understanding, uh, in this way of understanding, you would understand the Japanese culture. So we Japanese people uh, would appreciate everything that reflects on the uh, Japanese cuisine style, and that reflects on the future cuisine. That's what I wanted to talk about. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chef. So allow me to introduce the next, next chef, Hajime Kasuga. He's the third generation Japanese Peruvian, and his restaurant in Peru specializes in Nikkei cuisine, a cuisine that's existed for 120 years. It's a fusion of Peruvian and Japanese culinary traditions, using ingredients from both countries with Japanese techniques and prepared mostly by Japanese descendants. Chef Kasuga started out cooking Japanese, but changed to Nikki style cooking 20 years ago. He's also a teacher at Cordon Bleu Cooking School in Peru. Please welcome Chef Kasuga. Hello. 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 Muchas gracias por la por la presentación. So thanks for the introduction. Eh, como se darán cuenta, no hablo inglés. So as you can see, I don't speak English. He doesn't speak English. Así que le agradezco a Ali pues que me está ayudando. So thanks to me for doing the, tra the translation. <laughs> y también bueno agradecer a, a Anne McBride por el por la invitación ¿no? acá al. And al thanks evento. also to Anne McBride for inviting him here. Bueno. También, pues, este, en todo el, el evento me ha, me ha apoyado mucho Vivi, que me acompaña al costado. So, also, all during the event, Vivi has been helping him. So es, we'll eso sí es importantísimo tener a alguien, digamos, al, al costado, digamos, que te esté haciendo el soporte, ¿no? And he says it's in, really important to have somebody at your side giving you support in these kinds of events, so he wants to thank her. Bueno, un poco para... Vamos a... A empezar un poquito a, a explicarles el tema de la cocina Nikkei. So he wants to start by explaining uh, sort of the idea of Nikkei cuisine. 
Yo soy descendiente de japonés de tercera descent, generación. Of third generation. Sí. Entonces, eh, esta cocina Nikkei nace hace 114 años. So this Nikkei cuisine, as they mentioned, was, was born 114 years ago. Con esta fusión de técnicas japonesas con toques peruanos. With this fusion of uh, Japanese techniques with uh, Peruvian influence. Con, o al revés, con técnicas peruanas con este, toques japoneses. Or vice versa, with uh, Peruvian techniques with Japanese influence. Entonces, en, en mi caso, es lo que quiero presentarles el, el día de hoy. Son, es un tema, digamos, como que eh, vamos a jugar con, con la comida que nuestros ancestros nos enseñaron, sin ofenderlos, por supuesto. So, so where he's from and, and what his cuisine is sort of based on is the ability to play with what his ancestors have brought him without, you know, disgracing anybody. <laughs> bueno, para, para ir avanzando, eh, lo, que hemos, lo que vamos a hacer es, tenemos acá caldo. So here we have a, a broth de camarón of shrimp con tapioca with tapioca esto eh, qué es esto que está acá so this is the tapioca sí entonces hemos agregado la tapioca en el caldo so we've added the tapioca to the broth sí como y esto acá es el es kombu and this is kombu seaweed sí el lo que va a agregar el kombu al caldo es el el umami so what the kombu is going to bring to the to the broth is the umami flavor lo que queremos es, digamos, que cada vez que la persona la pruebe, digamos, de, de la tapioca, sienta, digamos, el, el sabor del, del umami. So what we want is with each bite of the tap uh, tapioca for the consumer to enjoy the umami flavor. Sí. Y el tema del, del juego... So es, the idea of the game... Es esto de acá. This over here. Tenemos... La carcasa de, de camarón. We have the shell of the shrimp. Lo vamos a, a freír muy delicadamente. So we're going to very, very gently fry it. Lo vamos a, a poner a un lado para para que escurra todo el, eh, el aceite. So we're going to leave it over here to drain off the oil. Lo dejamos por ahí. Y como acá tenemos ya la... Más o menos como que la, la tapioca ya va tomando el, la textura y el... Definitivamente esto toma un poquito de más, más tiempo. So now that the tapioca is getting the right texture, and, and this definitely takes a little bit more time. Uh -huh. Hemos avanzado con el trabajo de la... De, de agregarle además el calentar el, el caldo y cocinar la tapioca. So we're, so we're getting along with, with uh, the process of cooking the tapioca and, and heating the broth. Entonces lo que vamos a hacer es bueno rellenar. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill it la tapioca el, la carcasa de, de, de camarón. So we're going to fill the shrimp shell con la tapioca que hemos preparado with this tapioca muy delicadamente very gently ¿No? entonces lo que quiere lo que deseo en este caso es sentir el en la tapioca la textura de como si fuera del del arroz de, de sushi ah. so what he wants is he wants the tapioca to feel have the mouth feel of sushi rice y sobre todo digamos que al, al morder la tapioca se sienta el, el umami del, del caldo y el sabor del camarón. So more than anything, what we really want is when you bite into the tapioca to have the flavor of the shrimp and the umami as well. Vamos a poner la cabeza solamente de, de decoración. So we put the head there for decoration. Y, para, y sobre todo, digamos, para ahora lo que vamos a hacer es para las texturas o, o sabores, digamos, eh, japoneses uh -huh. que definitivamente tienen que acompañar un plato Nikkei. Vamos so, a... so to add the sort of touches, the flavors of Japan that need to accompany a Nikkei style dish. 
vamos a agregar salsa de soya espesada con kudzu. We're adding a little bit of soy sauce that's been thickened with kudzu, which is a kind of starch. Lo que a continuación vamos a poner siempre, bueno, la idea siempre de un, de un sushi es, digamos, este, el, el toque de, de wasabi. So, as always with sushi, you have a little bit of wasabi. Y, le, y lo que hemos hecho es un twist con, con el wasabi fresco que tenemos acá a un costado. So, he's made a, a wasabi twist with fresh wasabi. agregarle un poquito más de julianas de, de wasabi para que sea más, más bonito. We're also going to add wasabi julienne so it's prettier. Y para... Vamos a ponerle un poco del polvo de, de carcasa del camarón. So we're going to add a little bit of powdered shrimp shell as well. Un poquito de, de micromix. So, so a little bit of microgreens. Can you find wasabi? It's wasabi growing in Peru. Que se encuentra el wasabi en Perú. Lamentablemente, wasabi fresco es difícil de encontrar y ahí solamente tenemos los que son de eh, en polvo o en en chisquete. Unfortunately, it's it's really hard to find fresh wasabi, so they just have it usually powdered or. In y por eso estoy muy contento de, de usar este este producto acá. So that's why he's really happy to use this product here. <laughs> este es la la primera parte de, del plato y lo, la segunda parte. So this is the first part of the plate of the dish, and, and we're going to get to the second part. Siguiendo con el juego de la de la cocina. To keep going with the the sort of game he's playing with the with the cuisine. Es que en el en los eh, tenemos en los en el sushi bar eh, a la hora de preparar el arroz de sushi. So in the sushi bar, when it's time to uh, prepare the sushi rice. Se me, se me ocurrió que el, luego de preparar el, el arroz de sushi, agregándole pues vinagre, la sal y el azúcar, que va el... Que va el so el it occurred sushi. to him that instead of preparing sushi rice how it's usually prepared, which is adding later the uh, vinegar and uh, sugar. Nuevamente, eh, he, he puesto, digamos, el, el arroz de sushi en una olla y le, le he vuelto a agregar este... Un poco más de agua. Uh -huh. So he, he took that same sushi rice that was already cooked, put it back in a pot with more water. Le hemos uh, le agregado scallop. And added uh, diced scallop. Uh -huh. La idea es que el, el sabor del, del scallop eh, sea más fuerte. So the idea is that the, the, the flavor of the scallop will be, more, uh, will be stronger. Mucho, y mucho mejor sería también agregar eh, los escalos eh, secos. And, and even better would be to add dried scallop. Entonces, eh, una vez que hemos eh, cocido todo este ese caldo, so once we've cooked all this down, durante unos este, más o menos unos 45 minutos a fuego muy bajo, during about 45 minutes at a very very low flame, el resto de acá lo vamos a lo vamos a colar, so we're going to strain it, lo vamos a eh, le vamos a agregar eh, agar agar so we're add agar y vamos a gelatinizar y vamos a ponerlos en estos en estos moldes and we're going to gel them in these molds dejamos hasta que hasta que gelatinice and we're going to wait till it uh, sets y la idea es no parece como un nigiri 
and the idea is that it looks like a nigiri. La parte, bueno, de abajo del, del arroz. The, the, the rice on the bottom of the sushi. Pero con un sabor, digamos, a, a escalos, ¿no? But with a flavor of scallops. Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer acá es, en, en Perú, es muy eh, eh, famoso, está de moda el, el tema de los makis o sushis acevichados. Oh, so uh, right now, actually, in Peru, it's very popular to do makis or um, sort of ceviche style sushi. Uh -huh. Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer, vamos a hacer una, una salsa acevichada. So we're going to do a, a cevichified sauce. Pero una salsa muy fácil de hacer, ya que But it's very easy to make. tenemos un poco de mayonesa. So we have Japanese mayonnaise. Tenemos ají pasta de ají amarillo. So we've got a uh, paste of ají amarillo, a uh, yellow Peruvian pepper. Mezclamos nada más. Just mix it. Lo que vamos a hacer ahora es vamos a agregar al, a los escalops. So we're going to add it to the scallops. Y esto, bueno, vamos a ponerlo encima del shari gelatinizado. So we're going to put it on top of this gelatinized uh, rice that we have. Para que tenga un poquito más de, de textura, so le, vamos agregar, more texture, le vamos a agregar unas huevas de pez volador. So we're going to add flying fish roe. Are there any rules in the Nikkei cuisine that you have to have a certain part, portion of uh, Japanese and certain portion of Peruvian? Si hay reglas en la cocina Nikkei que tienes que seguir, oh. no. Eh, no, todavía, digamos, la cocina Nikkei es, en realidad se está iniciando. Oh. So, still, not yet, because it's still in its initial stages. Entonces, este, eso nos da libertad a poder hacer eh, algunas cosas, manteniendo, por supuesto, eh, eh, la calidad en la cocina, la calidad en la comida, en los productos, ¿no? respetando todos estos temas. ¿no? So that gives them the freedom to, to sort of play around and do things as long as it's high quality products, high quality um, food at the end. Tenemos unas huevas de, de salmón. So here we have a salmon roe. Que esto, bueno, muy amablemente me lo cantó el, el kuzu como las, las huevas eh, y el kombu, me lo me dio el chef eh, Chikara Yamada. So very generously, chef Chikara Yamada gave him the kutsu and the uh, salmon row and the kombu. Quería agradecerle, vamos a poner también un poquito más de, de decoración, limón para el, la frescura. So we're going a little bit of lime for freshness. Definitivamente no podía, no podía faltar eh, nuestro ají limo. And you can't forget the ají limo, which is another kind of uh, typical Peruvian pepper. Y la idea también es que, bueno, en sí es un sabor muy, muy fuerte. Entonces, lo que, lo que hemos hecho, hemos hecho una pasta con, con aguacate. So, by itself, it's a very, very strong flavor. So, he made a paste with avocado. Lo vamos a colocar acá, 
and out of here. Y para agregar un poco más del, del, del umami natural, so add a tenemos, little bit more natural umami. Vamos a hacer es, hemos hecho, hemos deshidratado eh, el escalo. So he dehydrated the scallops. Y lo que hemos este luego se se procesa y tenemos el polvo, ¿no? And then they put in a food processor and get a uh, powder. Vamos a ponerlo en toca en el limón. So we're going to put it on top of the lime. Y encima también del del nigiri de 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 scallops. Also on top of the nigiri of scallops. Y como estamos hablando pues de de sushi, definitivamente no no nos tiene que faltar pues el el gari, ¿no? And since we're talking about sushi, you can't forget the ginger. Igual lo vamos a poner acá un costadito. So we put a little bit. Y nada más. Y esta es la presentación de mi plato de sushi al estilo Nikkei. So this is sushi Nikkei style. Y quería, bueno, agradecer por todo el la paciencia y por, por estar aquí en el, en el evento y, y nada, los espero pues en, en Lima a que prueben de la cocina Nike. And he thanks everybody for your patience and for coming to the event and he waits for you in Lima where you can come try Nike cuisine. Gracias.